I was taken to the airport, uh, Julius Kambarage Nyere Airport in Dar es Salaam. I, I was deported the first time I boarded KQ. <laughs> <laughs> And you didn't have a passport at that no, point, no, but you had a no, work I had a permit. Passport. I had oh, you'd gotten your pa yeah, passport. A passport okay. and a work permit. Yes, but, but it was for it's for the other guy. So mm. the other guy chopped a wire, and of course, you know, he lost <laughs> talent and everything. When so, you look back now, you understand. Though. Yes. Yeah. So I was torn between two tycoons, mm. two rich guys, like super rich guys. Mm. So after like forty-five minutes, I find myself in Minentebe. Mm. No luggage, nothing. You've left everything back there? Yes. So I go to Nkuma Road. My dad laughs at me. <laughs> <laughs> so like you see, I told you. I told you. The girl laughs at me. And then Rodney told me, I went to Radio Uganda again. The booth. Mm -hmm. Rodney calls, he says, Bush, I'm going to New York, but I'm going to leave somebody to like sort you out, and then you'll come back. Mm. This is now, I think, 2000, 2000 2001. So he flies to New York. When he flies to New York, Osama bin Laden happens in New York. And then all international flights are grounded. Right. For about three, mo three months, I think. Mm. It's kind of like what we're going through right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was here, no money. Uh, all my friends had, my peers had moved on. Guys were in good jobs. You, you understand, eh? I was a celebrity, but with nothing to my... Your name. Yeah, mm. you understand, eh? Then um, I had a, a Kenyan, a, a half Mutoro, half Indian, half Somali, half Arab uh, girlfriend. Eh, okay. <laughs> a concoction, eh? <laughs> so she came and she joined me. Okay, so she left and she, came here? Yeah, she came. She came and joined me. Then my dad was like, now you've brought someone's daughter, you don't have a job and blah, 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 blah. And so where were you saying? You were living with your dad no, at that he, point? He, he had a hotel in Mengo. Okay. So we're living there. So I told him, you know what? After three months, I told him, you know what? Do me a favor. Just give me fare, bus fare. I go back to TZ. Thankfully, when I was being brought back to Entebbe, they never gave me those funny, awkward uh, the stamp. stamps. Yeah, yeah you know, mm -hmm. uh, persona non, non grata, uh, mm -hmm. you know, rejected and whatever. So we took, I think, it was Mawingu bus, Akamba bus. At about five, we reached Busi at about at about at about five, Nairobi at about nine, Namanga at about ten. I was just praying. I had never. This is a journey of like two days. Yes, I had never. I'm a staunch Catholic. Eh? I had never said the rosary. I was like, Lord, just let me cross Namanga and enter Tanzania. Just, just let me enter Tanzania and and everything else will be okay. So I went in. I knew some slight Swahili at that time, you know. Mm. Yeah, so the immigration guys were, they were friendly and they had also heard about me. Mm. They knew me. So I got in. Then the bus breaks down in Moshi. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Breaks down in Moshi. So we had to wait for another bus from Nairobi to come to Moshi to take us to there. It came at about six. Now, from Moshi, to the slum, it's like coast to coast. It's like driving from, I think, Arua to Kabale. <laughs> that journey must have you broken you. Eh? Yeah, so anyway, we take that journey. We got to that about 4 a.m. Tanzanians are very hospitable people, very mm. kind. Eh? Mm. If you don't cross them the wrong way. Yes. So the this cab guy, he noticed we were lost, we were were desperate because mm. like I can take you guys wherever you know you want to go now while I was in there there's a colleague I was living with but I could not remember the address where he was staying but the place was called Mikocheni but not the house mm. so I told the cab guy take me to Mikocheni mm. so we go to Mikocheni we move around Mikocheni it's like going around Tinder like 20 times and you're looking and you for couldn't certain find his house I couldn't find the house then there was a landmark I saw. I was like, no, this is the house. So I go in. It was called Dan. It was Kenyan. So I shout, Dan, 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 Dan. It's me. It's Bush. It's me. Michael, I'm here. Dan. Nothing. It began raining. <laughs> it's, it's not coming to five o'clock. It began raining. Um, 
Then I realized when you climb over the fence, you can actually open the gate from the, the other inside. side. Mm -hmm. So we dragged our suitcases and stuff and dumped them inside. I climbed and I opened. Now it was a huge bungalow with a, a laundry and whatever. Uh, the chick had, uh, what is it called, a lesso. What's it, what's it called, what's it, what's it called in, in English, a lesso? Um, a wrapper. We put it down. Crystal, that is the best sleep I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> After all those days yes. and all that stress. Yes. yes. Now, I had a small radio, a word receiver, the small word receiver. So I tuned East Africa radio mm. in the morning mm. and I listened to the bugger done. The girl was on radio. <laughs> the fool was on radio. Okay. Yes. Mm. So I was like, okay, there's hope. The guy is on radio. L let me wait, he'll come. So 10 a.m. Can you three, imagine you jumped over that fence and he wasn't living there anymore? Can you imagine? Or what if maybe there was a watchman and you know, mm, you understand? Anything eh? could have happened. Yes. So anyway, 10 a.m., the guy comes back, he opens the gate, he's like, hey, Bush! <laughs> 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 What's up? What's happening? Mm -hmm. How, when did you come? I was like, no. Tell me one thing, is Rodney back in the country? Mm. Is he at the office? He said, yeah, he's at the office. I said, I'll see you, I'm coming back. I walked the office. I walked pa past security, everything. I entered Rodney's office and Rodney was like, Bush, <laughs> are you a ghost or what? Like, uh -huh. can you imagine I was just signing off your air ticket for someone to, you know, to, to bring you, know, you back. Yeah, bring you back. Like I had this whole thing um, uh, sorted and, you know, the whole mess is gone. But anyway, don't worry. He pulled out uh, a drawer some stacks of money, gave me some, some money, <laughs> told me, go get some clothes, uh, check in, check in, where are you, where are you staying? Mm. Check, check in into a hotel and you know, mm. um, just freshen up and then you shall catch up later. You know, all this is just operating on faith. Yes, faith, like blind faith, blind faith. So I go do some shopping and whatever, I check into a hotel and then he comes and picks me up in the evening, we go around, drinks and he tells me now so what plans do you have what do you want to do i told him i want to work i just want to work <laughs> after just, what you've been through yes i just want to work he yeah. told me don't worry after a week uh they cancelled the other work permit mm. i was issued with a new work permit mm. and uh, my paperwork was obviously now legit and in order i hit the airwaves uh -huh. with anger <laughs> i was hungry you and are back. I was, uh, and now we were in Nairobi, we were, I think, in Burundi, we were in Rwanda, we were in Uganda. Now, before I left, man, guys denied, that, denied us chances here. Mm. So guys, you tried? Yeah, guys like R.S. Elvis, not in a bad way. Mm. Russell Rob MC, Alan Kasuja, Gloria Kamba. Man, those guys were stars, they were celebrities. You could not even, like... You understand? Eh? So mm. I said, I'm going to show these guys. I'm <laughs> going to show these guys. So I had, had anger. Mm. You understand? So anyway, we begin East Africa Radio. We kicked. You, you know the story. I don't mm. really have to. That's, yeah. that's the first time I actually heard you and yes. heard about you was exactly. East Africa yes. Radio time. No, my Kiswahili was very authentic. I mm. could communicate. I could even... Uh, 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 broadcast in Kiswahili and you, you know now I had become a household name in TZ mm. I remember the High Commissioner at that time was uh, Honorable Katenta Apuli I became like the de facto number two ah. like Ugandans would come yeah, and say Abush Mbuze my passport was stolen I don't have money and you were handling that? Uh, yes and I'll be like, go to the High Commission. They're like, no, they give you, and they, they only give you an, uh, an option of making one phone call, and then that's it. They won't help you. Like I would house guys. I had issues with my girl then. She was like, but you're not charity. You understand? Guys would lock the office. Mm. You understand? But mm. these were Ugandans, you know, the stranded. You understand? And eh? you'd been in that situation. Exactly. You understood. Exactly. Mm. So anyway, then. EATV comes. Mm. EATV comes. Uh, we plan and uh, man, those guys were rich. Eh? 
the Mingis, eh? mm. they were rich, super rich, like super rich. I had a beach house. A beach, like I would just open my balcony and I'm just seeing the Indian Ocean. All these privileges as young and naive, like mm -hmm. I had a vehicle there and everything. Mm -hmm. You understand? So anyway, EATV comes and then we kick Channel O out of East Africa. Mm -hmm. You remember? Yes. Uh, we made Jose Chameleon, we made Nameless. We made the Ogopa DJs. Actually, we, you gave a chance to so many Ugandan exactly, musicians to play their exactly. music on that platform. Single-handedly. Mm -hmm. Single-handedly. Mm -hmm. Single-handedly. Something I'm really proud of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, single-handedly. So, but I made it a point to stay relevant at home. Uh -huh. okay. That is how I started Utake Night uh -huh. with Peter Wacha mm -hmm. and the late DJ Jero mm -hmm. eh, at uh, Stakeout. That's to stay relevant at home. Uh -huh. okay. That is how I started Utake Night uh -huh. with Peter Wacha mm -hmm. and the late DJ Jero mm -hmm. eh? at uh, Stakeout. At Stakeout. I, 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 I made it a point that I needed to be relevant at home. So I would fly in at least every three months, come in and you know, interface, uh, meet guys. I, I used to live at Steve Jean's place at Buganda Road. Is this because when you had come back before, even though you had made something of yourself back in TZ, mm. here no one was giving you a chance? Is that exactly. why? Exactly. I was angry. I need to prove a point. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you a story. In hindsight, in hindsight, when we were just beginning to sing, um, Shanks Vividi had a show with Rasta Rob at, uh, at, I think, the Arena Cricket Oval. Mm -hmm. So we went and we told them, we want to cut and raise and blah, 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 blah. You know what Shanks Vividi did? He did this. Just showed us the door. Now, fast forward. I came in, uh, I think, 2006. I had a very big show called Uganda Central. Guess whom I find? Mm -hmm. Shanks Vividi. And he's begging for an interview. I've never reminded him of that, by the way. I've, mm. I, I'm not that kind of person. but. But you remembered but, it. You, yes, yes, but yes. So that's but, what drove but you. But it taught me so much. Yeah. So much. And uh, over the years, I've come to appreciate humility. Humility. Humility is a huge virtue. There's a time I came for Otake Night, and uh, after my set, Pato of Ngoni. <clears throat> Remember Ngoni? Mm. He told me, Bush, let me take you around. You know, you hardly, you know, hang around. Uh, let me take you to, we went to Club Silk. So we go to Club Silk, we're there for about an hour, a couple of drinks here and there. I don't, I don't drink that much. Mm. So as we were walking out, there was this uh, Somali looking guy. So he comes, hey Bush, Mambo Niaje, VP in Kiswahili, yeah. we jazz. Then Pato says, Ane Bush, Mwana, Bunobugai, Wana, Bunobugai, Wana, Tebukutama, Tebukukoya. You know what the guy said? Pato. Uganda and Tegira, Uganda and Tegira, at the music of Matira, at the Nifani Wopato, at the Nabushi Matira. I felt like being swallowed by the ground on behalf of Pat Pato. Mm. You understand? So mm. there are certain things I've been through that have taught me that just being humble. No, it's such an important lesson, yeah, especially. You understand? Especially when you're young, yes. a lot of people think, especially if you're young and you're doing well, exactly. you forget that life is full of ups and downs. Exactly. You never know who you meet, how they will influence you in the future. Yes. Like you said, I mean, this point you're asking someone for help, mm. 10 years down the line, yes. they're the ones begging you for an opportunity. Exactly, so, yes. Yeah. I still have emails, I still have letters, I still have envelopes, CDs, people from, people like Benon, Peter Miles, like they would send me their music. Mm. Through, 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 through the buses, you understand? Yeah. They'll be like, man, you gonna do want to play our songs and yeah. blah, 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 blah. I'm done who broke Diggy. I'm done who broke One Time. <laughs> I'm done who broke Vigula. Mm. I broke so many songs. It was very funny. I would come here and guys, guys would ask me, but how do you guys do it? I mean, how do you, how come you guys play any Ugandan song? How come? Our guys here don't play our own stuff. I, there I was, was a time when there was no respect for Ugandan music. Exactly. Mm. You understand? Steve Jean would call me and say, Hey Bush, I've sent you a parcel. There's Blue 3, there's a new banging single, please. Uh, you understand? Eh? Mm. 
And then we began now importing guys. We brought Juliana, Michael Ross, Peter Miles, so many guys, mm -hmm. Benon and Vampos, like we pushed guys in TZ. Same thing happened in Kenya, nameless, mm -hmm. name them. Mm -hmm. I became somehow. And it all made sense for the platform. It's exactly. African. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But now, here's the thing. <clears throat> I was young, I was naive. I was uh, just having fun, mm. but I didn't know I was inspiring people. I didn't know I had admirers. I didn't know I was motiv motivating people. I was just having fun. I was just, as a young kid, was just trying to, you know, mm. do my thing and, you know, just, just be me. But I didn't know the impact I had on people. It was until when I think I left TZ and uh, went to Kenya for about two years, mm. then I realized the kind of impact I had on the, on the region. And then when I came back to Uganda, and guys were like, bush, 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 like, oh my God, mm -hmm. I'm actually a monster. You understand, eh? I remember, you know Baba Bright? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Baba Bright. Baba Bright one time told me that uh, Bill Tibingana wanted to poach me. At that time, I was at Capital FM. Yes. He wanted to poach me. It was a PD then? Yes, it was a PD. Time. Now, you know Capital. Capital, they do things by the book. Even songs have research and everything. Yes. He told me that they went across the country and uh, they did a survey. But for every five Ugandans, I think they sampled, four of them knew who I was. They were like, we can't afford this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we, we, we can't. They gave up before they yeah, even they were, tried. They were, like, they were like, no, we, we just can't afford this guy. I mean, this guy is too huge. Hmm. We can't. But to me, all those things are really taught me humility. Anyway, uh, again... I, I need to take you back. You yes. know, we've been talking, talking, but you haven't told us mm. how you got to call yourself Bush. Bush baby. I wish I had an answer to that. Hmm? I wish I had an answer for that. Was I, it just, you just... It's just it's just one of those things where you... Because a bush baby is this really cute, tiny little yeah, animal. Yeah, very shy, big eyes. nocturnal. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't have an answer to that. But somehow it has uh, turned out to be a miracle name. Um, it has gotten me where I am. It, uh, you got, don't remember? I don't. Like when, I, like how you started using it? Was it was in TZ, but I don't remember how. I do not remember. I won't lie. Hmm. Okay. I, I, I probably need to make up a story. <laughs> no, no. Thank yeah. you for being honest. Yes, but, but it's been a miracle name. Like, it's memorable. It's, 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 mm. it's, it's, it's catchy. It's, uh, mm. I even patented it. Oh. Yeah, I patented it. Yeah, Good. so yeah, but I I won't lie to you that this is when I decided to be. Uh, uh, when you first Bush went baby. on radio, I was DJ Michael. Okay. But then there were so many DJ Michaels. So you always went as a DJ. Yeah. Okay. No, I went in. Uh, okay, when I went when I went to t when I went when I when I left Uganda, I was a regular presenter anchor. Mm -hmm. Now when I went to TZ. Uh, here we have the British FM philosophy, where you get in and you do everything. You have to do everything. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now in TZ and Kenya, it's based on the American philosophy. There's a presenter and a DJ. Uh, you understand that? Uh? Mm -hmm. So the presenter mans the desks and the mic and whatever, and then the DJ mm -hmm. plays.